Hi, this is Cynthia from Kiwi Urban Homestead. Today I thought we'd take a look at some of the tomato varieties I'm growing this year and the ways in which I'm growing them. I have several varieties of determinate tomatoes and several of indeterminate. Determinate ones grow to a certain height and then stop and indeterminate send out much more vine-like branches and can grow to quite enormous heights. I've got in the determinate varieties I've got Tiny Tim these are quite sturdy looking little seedlings and they are plants that only grow 30 to 40 centimetres tall producing lots of very small sweet tomatoes. This is a tiny tim that I planted or potted up last month. Let's pull back so you can see that a bit more. And it's almost at its mature height there and it's just starting to flower. I've also got some Roma. Roma is a popular type for um, bottling and preserving, it produces a more meaty, round, uh, oval shaped, egg shaped tomato and I grew quite a few of those last year. I've also got some silvery fir and the silvery fir is a Russian heirloom and the plants often look quite, what's the word, weakish I guess, and they're not particularly stocky plants, they've got very feathery leaves, however they do produce quite large tomatoes um, but need staking because the weight of the tomatoes tends to pull the plant over. Last year my plants grew to probably about 30 or 40 centimetres high as well. And I also have subarctic plenty, this, this is one of the ones I planted or potted up last month and these ones grow to about a metre tall which is quite tallish for a determinant variety but they're an early and they produce um, a crop very early, it's supposed to be one of the earliest in the world. In the indeterminate varieties I have got some box car willy, now I've never grown this before, a friend gave me some seeds and I had to look up what they were like but according to the website that I found box car willy is also an early producer producing at no, sorry, it's not an early, it's a bit of a longer one, it's about 80 days. Quite good sized tomatoes and apparently particularly lovely ones that according to this website are predicted to become one's favourite variety to grow. I have some striped heritage ones. These seedlings are very much in need of potting up in a good feed. Now these ones I actually saved from um, a plant that self-seeded itself in my paddock and was the only tomato plant last year that did not get affected by TPP, the tomato potato psyllid. This is a tigerella um, variety which originally came from a friend. These ones produce in about 56 days so they're a fairly early one as well and quite productive. They have a lovely striped tomato. I've got Gardener's Delight, another one I haven't tried before, also came from seeds from a friend. Now Gardener's Delight is one that can grow absolutely enormous, it, needs tr it can be trellised like a grapevine and has long, long bunches of smallish sweet tomatoes, so that will be an interesting one to see. And finally some Moneymaker, Moneymaker is a good old popular variety, grows a fairly tall indeterminate vine that produces a medium to large, um, very useful and tasty tomato. So those are the varieties that I'm growing so far this year and as I said all of these need potting up. Now it's always a good idea before potting up any plants to give them a really good watering and let them sit long enough to absorb that moisture. The higher their leaves and stems are in moisture content before you pot them up the more resistant they'll be to transplant shock. So I'm going to give these a good watering and let them sit for a bit before I do some potting up. Recently I've been engaged in quite a bit of discussion with some other vegetable gardeners as the best way to grow tomatoes or most vegetables in pots. Is compost the best thing to grow them in? Is potting mix the best thing to grow to them in? Perhaps a mixture? Or should we mix topsoil and compost? Or as one suggested half fill the bucket with um, cow manure and top that with compost. Of course for me if I want to know if something works best I decide to conduct an experiment. So I have decided that I'm going to pot up 20 of my tomatoes into 9 litre plastic buckets, or technically 9.6 litre buckets, and find out which mixtures actually produce the best results. So for this I've got 20 buckets, 5 in each colour, 4 different colours, and I've drilled holes in the bottom of them. A little bit of um, trial and error proved that the best thing is not to use a drill bit larger than 6 millimetres in diameter, 
and not to apply too much pressure or run the drill too fast. If you do that, it tends to shatter the bottom of the bucket because these are kind of thin on the bottom. So just to slow and gently um, drill your holes if that's what you're going to do. So the next thing is for me to go and collect some sheep manure. I don't have cows, but I do have sheep. I'm going to collect some sheep manure for some of the buckets, and I'm going to start putting together some mixtures, five different mixtures, into these buckets, and then plant some of my tomatoes in them. I've gone out into the paddock and visited my sheep, who have all very kindly taken turns lining up and making deposits into my buckets. Yeah, right. By far the easiest way to collect um, sheep manure is simply to put a pair of gloves on and go around the paddock picking up the little deposits that they leave everywhere and popping them into the bucket. I've got a bit of a mixture of ages here, mostly older, dry, some fresher stuff which I think is good. Sheep like cows, deer, goats, llamas and a few other creatures are ruminants. Ruminants have four stomachs so they eat the grass it goes into the first stomach, later they regurgitate it into their mouth and chew it again, it's called chewing the cut, and then it goes down into the second stomach and so on until it's gone through the entire full stomach process. It's reputed that um, the manure from ruminants is the very best stuff to use in the garden. And that's why farmers for, and cottages for centuries have used um, dung from cows and sheep and other farm animals in their gardens with great effect. So hopefully this will help me grow some great tomatoes. So I'm going to head back to the greenhouse and start assembling some of the other ingredients. Last year when I was first developing my gardens we did a lot of turfing, that is cutting off the top couple of inches of topsoil with all the grass and grass roots in it and stack them up out here in the paddock next to the fence where the chickens have kind of worked over them over the last year and have dug into bits and used them as dust baths and so on. So when I need some topsoil now, I'm just coming out and taking some of the soil and sieving it to get out any remaining grass roots before using it, in this case, in pots or buckets. So I've got this um, a door off an old cage, which is conveniently covered in hardware cloth, and it works great as a soil sieve. So I just put um, a shovel full of soil on here, work it through the holes, and then any roots and things and bits of grass are left behind, and I can toss them to one side. So this is how I'm collecting my top soil for this particular experiment. So now we have our buckets of um, sheep manure, top soil, and some potting mix and compost. I'm ready to start filling the buckets. I've created a sheet to keep track of what I'm doing. And basically what I've decided is that I'm going to have five groups of different types of soil mix. So we've got straight potting mix, straight compost, a 50-50 potting mix compost mixture, a 50-50 compost topsoil mixture and finally buckets with a thin layer of topsoil at the bottom followed by half filling them with sheet manure and filling the, re the rest of the way with compost. To these I'll be adding a quarter of a cup of milk powder per bucket and a handful of crushed um, eggshells. This is for calcium which tomatoes really need. In order to um, really compare which growing medium produces the best results, I need to treat all the plants identically in terms of any additives. So they'll just be getting this for calcium, and we'll be doing a weekly feed of liquid fish suspension as well. I've decided to use five varieties of tomatoes for this experiment. We've got Moneymaker, Roma, uh, Silvery Fir Tree, um, Tigerella, and boxcar willy. So I'll be planting one money maker in a bucket of compost, one money maker in a bucket of potting mix, one money maker in each of the different varieties of mixture. I've got four different coloured buckets and I'm writing on each one. So for example, number two bucket, potting mix and Roma tomato. And that's um, going to work out quite well because I will use the 10 red buckets for the straight mixes, the, the straight growing mediums. Uh, five for compost, five for potting mix. The other ones will be colour coded according to what's in them. So if the um, permanent marker on the side of the buckets fades in time, I'll know because of the positioning of them and the colour of the bucket what mixture's in them and I'll be able to tell from the plants themselves what variety they are. But I'm also keeping a record on this piece of paper as well. So I'm just about ready to start filling up my buckets and planting some of the tomatoes. In setting up these buckets, I have first of all put 
half filled the buckets, then added the uh, milk powder and eggshell and stirred it into the lower half of the bucket before topping up with a straight mix. So these ones have potting mix in them and it's now time to add our first tomato seedlings. A couple of things worth noting when um, potting up seedlings, it's good to ease them out of their container, in this case it's a punnet and I find just an ordinary bread and butter knife very useful. So I've actually already loosened that with the knife because it's hard to do this one handed holding the camera. And as you can see it's got quite a strong root ball. Now, um, with tomatoes, these lower leaves here are the first leaves that appear when the seedling first sprouts. I'm going to snip those off and I'm going to bury the seedling up to just below its first true leaves. This will put all of the stem underground and will give the um, plant an opportunity to develop more roots off the stem, which the tomato will do quite well. The bigger and longer and stronger the root structure, the bigger, stronger and healthier the resulting plant will be. So I'm going to go ahead and put this money maker in here. I'll be putting aroma in the next bucket and then doing each of the other um, red buckets which are all full of potting mix. Also note that after filling up each set of buckets I've given them a good soaking with the hose so that they're already fully moist before putting the seedlings in and that way I won't have to hose down the seedlings. As you can see all the buckets are now filled with growing medium and planted with tomatoes. Each group of five buckets of one colour has a single growing medium mixture in it and um, five different varieties of tomatoes so that those same five varieties are repeated throughout the different colours of bucket. The extra leftover seedlings have been potted up into some smaller pots and they'll be planted out in the garden in a month or so. And while they're not part of the experiment they will provide a bit of a contrast as to whether the ones growing outside do better than the ones growing in here in these buckets. When I filled the buckets I left a couple of inches from the top the reason for that is, as the tomatoes grow, they'll start to develop some um, roots quite close to the surface and I want to be able to top up the bucket slightly at that point just to keep those roots covered up and I'll probably add an inch or so of wood chip on top just to help keep things moist and well covered up. You can see in these ones in the pot that they've got surface roots here and the, these ones need to be covered up. We'll have a look at those in just a moment. Just taking a wee look at some other tomatoes in pots at the moment and just uh, note a few things about growing them. This particular one is a grafted tomato. I've never grown a grafted tomato before but they're reputed to be more disease free or more disease resistant and stronger and more vigorous with better production. So I thought I'd try one this year. This one I picked up on sale at the warehouse looking a wee bit sad but hopefully it will recover fine. So here's its label, a super grafted tomato by Dr Walter. As you can see with a grafted tomato, the graft is right down the bottom. It's got some tape over it and if you look closely through the tape you can see where they've split the stem of the main uh, of the upper part of the plant and, and slid it over the top part of the base. For this reason, when planting them you don't bury this part or don't bury the plant as deeply as you don't want the graft under the soil where it may get moisture in it and cause rot and other problems. I've tied this one to a stake. Tying tomatoes is done in a number 8 fashion where you take your piece of soft uh, twine, wrap it around the post and um, cross it over before wrapping it around the stem of the plant. This means that there's a bit of protection between the plant and the post or the stake and it won't rub as much. Always use soft twine as well. Now I've pinched out the laterals on this particular plant starting from the bottom and I'll be planting this plant out in the garden I think, probably in about a month or so. This one is a subarctic plenty I potted up last month and I plan to keep growing inside in the greenhouse. It started to form some quite vigorous laterals and I'll be taking these ones off with a seeker too because they're too big to um, pinch out and pinching out some of these other ones. Ones like this are very easy to pinch out, just thumb and forefinger and remove them. When you do have some slightly bigger ones like this for instance, it could be taken off and then actually potted up and grown into a new plant if one desired to do so. As you can see some of the roots are now on the surface of this um, pot so I'll be adding a bit of extra potting mix to cover those up. And I've added a hoop of a reinforcing steel to act as a stake for this particular plant so I'll be tying it from one side to the other. So uh, a tie from the um, steel on the left to the plant and from the plant to the steel on the right to just support it in the middle. This one's a tiny tim 
only grows 30 to 40 centimeters and there's no need to bother pinching out laterals on these plants it will just develop a bit more of a bushy look with a few um, branches coming off the sides but I won't bother to remove the laterals and it will be quite happy and healthy and produce lots of lovely little tomatoes so that's a few things about tomatoes today talk to you next time